A lot of South Africa's case against Israel for genocide, which we'll get to, is based on these out-of-hand statements by people like Smotrich, who don't have control over, over security decisions and yet have said things that would seem to, to point toward a desire to commit actual genocide. And Israelis have to get used to the idea that public statements matter. On the other hand, Israel's a democracy. In a democracy, you have to be able to make public statements, including ones that go against official government policy. Putting an injunction to say stop, stop any military action, is it their business to do that? Well, it makes logical sense. Imagine if uh, someone was going to bulldoze your house and you said they don't have the right to do it. The case to determine whether they have the right or don't have the right might take years. But at the very least, you want them to stop bulldozing so that there's something to even discuss. And that's sort of the idea. Is South Africa is making the case that this genis there's a genocide that's ongoing. It has to stop right now, and then we can figure out the details. Now, of course, South Africa's case for genocide is absurd. And South Africa knows that. And that's why they're not even trying to win. They're just trying to get this order. And what's particularly cynical is that the International Court of Justice has jurisdiction over Israel because Israel signed the Convention Against Genocide. They do not have jurisdiction over Hamas or Islamic Jihad or any of the other terror groups. So this would literally be an order that specifically calls for Israel to stop its defense but allows Hamas to continue. Technically speaking, under international law, if Hamas were to launch another October 7th style attack in the wake of this order, Israel would, would be forced by international law to sit and watch it happen. Now, I'm not saying Israel would do that, but that is literally what the court is talking about possibly doing today. I don't, I don't think our, our social media warriors out there, the, the TikTokers, understand that. So one more time, spell it out. If Israel were to be attacked today, but after this injunction was put down, they could not defend themselves. If Israel were to follow international law, Israel would literally have to sit and watch Hamas enter Israel and do the same acts as October 7th if Hamas chose to do that. Israel would be forced under international law to allow that to happen, and Hamas would be permitted to do it. Israel is the only country in the world that has never been allowed to win a war. Israel has come out of wars with what is essentially a stalemate, but winning in the way that the Allied powers did during World War II, where the enemy no longer effectively exists anymore, Israel's never been permitted to do that. This is the fifth time Israel's fought a war with Hamas. Every time Hamas has survived and come back more powerful, more well-funded, more resourced than before. The message to the world is you might as well attack Israel because you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. We are on the verge of seeing Israel for the first time in its history win a war in the true international Western sense of it. And that will send a message throughout the world that will probably increase Arab Abraham Accord relationships, increase Israel's security and prosperity in years to come, and increase safety for the entire Arab world in the Middle East. The opposite would have exactly the opposite effect. If Hamas no longer exists as a functional entity after this war is over, that sends a strong message to the world that you try to launch that kind of attack against Israel, even if you succeed in the short term, the price is that you won't be around to enjoy your victory. Now, people say you can't destroy Hamas. That's a common thing to say. But by that logic, America never won World War II because some people in the world call themselves Nazis. But the fact is there's a big difference between a neo-Nazi today versus the Third Reich, which had territorial control, a military, a budget, and, and, and all of this, this power. There will probably always be someone who calls themselves Hamas. There will probably always be someone who calls themselves Al-Qaeda. But if Hamas goes the way of neo-Nazis, becomes essentially a small group of people with ideologies but no ability to function in the world, that sends the message that the price of this kind of attack against Israel undermines the thing that you're trying to accomplish, which in the case of Hamas was to grow its prestige, its power, its funding. If we produce the opposite of that, we will have a safer world.